Edmonton and the very wonderful Burgess High School of Jazz Band.
official welcome back to all loyal alums and friends to Parsons College to what we have called this the grand finale all college reunion 1995. As we enjoy this memorable gathering in Fairfield rejoicing the 120th birthday believe it or not of Parsons College let us also remember those fellow grads faculty and staff that have touched and enriched our lives in the past. We also want to pay homage to Maharishi International University for maintaining the education process and keeping it alive on this beautiful, vibrant campus. Thank you very much, MIU. It means a lot. Before moving along, a reminder of the special tree planting ceremony in front of Fairfield Hall immediately following our convocation today. And secondly, we wanted to let you know of the Iowa Homecoming Hawk Roast at Jefferson County Park. Jeff, or George Jordan, I've been out there two or three times now, folks. We didn't find one mosquito, so don't worry about the low flying skeets out there, no problem whatsoever. We'll have some signs up for you, for those of you that aren't, don't know where the park is, and it's a beautiful setup. It has pavilions and everything else. Uh, it's south and Highway 1, that'll be at 4 o'clock today, and we'll have some signs for you set up so you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Now let me present, present John Braywood, a financial trust officer from Travis City, Michigan, with a special communication. John? Greetings, everyone. 31 years ago, exactly 31 years ago, I had a real black cloud flying in my life. You see, the University of New Mexico had decided that I was no longer credible. And upon that announcement, it became very clear to me that I did not have a college to return to. My father, being the architect that he was in my life, said, son, I think I have a solution for you, and I think I have two alternatives that I'd like to put in place. One is a college that's located in the middle of a cornfield in Iowa, <laughs> and it's the latter is a U.S. Army. <laughs> so, you can't do that. You can't, you can't make me join the United States Army. He said, son, you don't realize how well connected I am with Samuel Stratton. And some of the other important people, officials in Washington, D.C. He said, if I want to get you the United States Army, he said, my God, you're gone. <coughs> I thought to myself, and then he, he really chimed in with a concluding remark that made it all possible. And he said, after all, he said, wouldn't you rather be sitting in a cornfield than lurking bullets in a rice paddy? And I thought to myself, yes, Vietnam. Fairfield Iowa does sound a lot nicer than, than Vietnam. So on my way, I came to Parsons College, not knowing what to expect. Of course, and I, one of my difficulties in the University of New Mexico was the fact that I enjoyed skiing so much that uh, I got wrapped up in the ski team, and academically, a number of things came to fold. So having arrived at Parsons College, I, I was really very skeptical as to how long I was going to last year, and just how much I was going to like it. And I want you to know that without any reservation, without any reservation whatsoever, this was the best experience that I've ever had in my young adult life. I think that if I had to do it over again, there wasn't going to be one thing that I could do. Again. I might, I might have guided Lord G. Roberts a little differently, but uh, there's one thing that I would have done differently. I also have fond memories of most people I met not only on campus. And those people that I, that I cherished on campus were those people who I met off campus. As you see, I was the night clerk at the Dream, Dream Hotel at 472-4161. And from 7 o'clock until 7 o'clock in the morning, and 7 p.m. to 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, boy, and I get to see a lot of activity. <laughs> but it was that experience, and it was that experience on campus that really where there was really a, a love in for me for this, <clears throat> for this uh, environment. And I can remember going back to Albany, New York, and Speckett, New York, and telling them what a wonderful time I had on Iowa. And they all looked at me and said, how is this possible? 
Well, you really had to be here to understand just how beautiful it was, obviously. <clears throat> I want you to know that upon my graduation from, uh, from uh, Parsons College, I had an opportunity to interview with the Ford Motor Company, East Monodac, Monsanto, and 3M Company. Uh, that didn't say something for what Parsons College had in the way of delivery, or a conduit, if you will, to prospective businesses. I, 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 I don't think I can think of a better example. I also would like you to know that I was a, uh, I volunteered as a, uh, as, a what, as a volunteer recruiter for Parsons for about three or four years in New York State. I went around the high schools recruiting students and I had a flaw. I kept thinking to myself, I think I'm in the wrong business. I think I'd like to be a recruiter. This is really fun. And we, I had, we had a story to tell. And believe me, I didn't hold back on any of the stories. Unfortunately, as we all know, <clears throat> due to a set of circumstances that just seemed absolutely impossible to believe at the time and continue to be very difficult for me to understand this date. We saw our subsequent demise as a college. But I want you to that I was employed uh, after Minnesota Mining with Key Corp in Albany, New York, and part of my responsibility <clears throat> was only on New York. So I had the opportunity to travel back and forth on it, and I got to know some of the principals, some of the people who were responsible for the founding of Parsons College. Clyde Wright. I visited with uh, Dr. Roberts. I visited with Mrs. Roberts. I visited with anybody that I knew that had an affiliation with Parsons College. And it was quite remarkable what came out of that for me, because about six weeks before Clyde W. Wright passed away, I asked him if he would have lunch with me. I told him that I wanted to thank him for the opportunity that he had given me at Parsons College and the wonderful experience that I had had. And he was 93 or 94 years of age, but still very lucid, but physically he was failing. And I, I, I began by extending my gratitude for Parsons College, and he said to me, it was quite obvious, he was very bitter by the fact that the Parsons College had come to a conclusion. And at the same time, now this is, I'm glad we're all sitting because I, I was always happy that I was sitting when he told me this. He had purchased 225 acres in Oneonta, New York, whereby it is, the, which is now the, the uh, Olympic, excuse me, it is the Soccer Hall of Fame for the United States. That piece of property and, the, and all the work, all the architectural drawings that he brought with me was to be. Parsons College Medical School. And if Parsons College, he maintains, if Parsons College had not gotten in trouble that it did in Fairfield Highway, that, that that was his hope, that was his plan, and he was gonna he was going to uh, he was gonna erect that school. Now it would have been quite a boost for Oneonta because Oneonta had two schools as in Harvard College, as in Oneonta State, and then Parsons Medical School. I think that I came out of Parsons with a dual education. I came out of Parsons College with a academia education, and I came out of Parsons College with a, an experience in reality. I saw what could occur politically, and I saw how human beings can meet each other, I saw how the business world really worked. I have a son who is at Skidmore College in Sir Joe Garden. I love him to pieces, but I want you to know this is the most ID child I've ever talked to in my life. He doesn't have a clue as to what's going to happen when he gets out of school. This college prepared me for the life of reality and for the life, for the life of academia. I love the school with all my heart. Thank you.
Bob assures me we will run again. No, I, I shouldn't say that. I'll be coming over here doing his campaigning for him, and I don't know how that would work out. Bob, of course, as you remember, Mayor Rasmussen, I should say, is the former Parsons College Public, Public Relations Director, and I'm very proud to say he was the one that gave me my first opportunity to be in the job world when he named me his Assistant Director of Public Relations back in 1965. So I'd like to bring to the podium now the Mayor of Fairfield, Robert Rasmussen. Yeah. 
good balance in our community, and I hope you take just a few minutes today to look around and not just remember Parsons College, but take a look at what's happened to the city that you had for just a little while while you were attending school here. Thank you very much. need. 
many meetings, as any college president would be glad to tell you if he can get a chance to buttonhole you. There are just ordinary bills to pay. There are the faculty and staff salaries. There are buildings, campuses to be maintained. Indeed, buildings that have been well maintained, but sometimes they have outgrown their usefulness and they must be renovated at considerable expense in order to bring them up to speed for today and for the coming century. Uh, there are uh, new buildings that must be built uh, to accommodate new students, new programs, and that sort of thing. The list goes on endlessly. Consequently, if you would like, and I would hope that many of you would, if you haven't already done so, would like to get on a college mailing list, just give a gift to a college near you with as many small co private colleges as there are throughout this country, there has to be one within 50 miles, I would think, of every one of you, and all of the Parsons alums scattered across the country who are not able to be with us today. And what I would suggest to you is that you contact the, a college development office, a college uh, library director, and offer to give a gift in the memory of Parsons College. Not just in your own name, but give it in the memory of Parsons. This college is a part of a great tradition. Why shouldn't its name and its memory be continued on throughout the country and wherever Parsons alums are and make it known? Uh, furthermore, I think that if a student, faculty member, whoever, opens a library book and sees a gift plate in their book given by so-and-so in memory of Parsons College, Fairfield, Iowa, 1875-1973, it sends a powerful message that here were people who cared enough about their college to give to another college when their own school was not any longer in existence. It would carry on the tradition of the college. It would be meaningful. It would give your uh, actions and lives as alums of a fine institution additional meaning. And this, after all, is really what being an alumnus is all about. It is carrying on the tradition giving the support to an ongoing institution. After all, there were people unknown to most of you who gave to keep this college going, to have it in place so that it was here for you. And it really, if the college were still functioning, it would be, and most of you would consider part of your life and obligation to give to it, to keep it going. That is not the case, so I suggest that you keep the tradition going and help a school that is near you. They need it, and they will always need help, and they will be eternally grateful. I can't imagine any college president in this country who wouldn't be delighted to put in their book of annual giving, and they always have a memorial page or a memorial column can't imagine that they wouldn't be happy to put in that there is a scholarship in history, let us say, of course, scholarship in history given in memory of Parsons College by so and so and so and so. And I do emphasize put in that nameplate or that uh, gift the fact that it's Parsons College, Fairfield, Iowa. We don't want it to be confused with the Parsons School of Design in New York City, which sometimes we used to get mail for them out here. And the dates, eight, and I'll get this down in your notes, 1875 to 1973. We get across that this was an old institution. It had had a long history that it was not some uh, fly-by-night uh, college, and that was 
here and gone uh, in a twinkle of an eye. So I just leave that with uh, with you this morning. I hope that it might be something that could benefit colleges all over the country and promote uh, higher education, which needs all of the help. And that, of course, is one of the strengths of this country is that people have volunteered down through the years of their time, their money, their energy uh, to make things happen and not just wait around for government to do it. Have a wonderful weekend. It's good to see all of you here. And I hope that really many of you will come back in the years to come and visit us and not feel that just because this is advertised as the last reunion, that it really has to be. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tree. Putting this together took quite a bit of work, but we also want to make sure that you knew that we had a lot of cooperation. There were a lot of people. I wish you would look at the back side of your program, uh, the fourth page, and, and note the acknowledgments of those people that have helped us so much with this program today. We mentioned, and we mentioned once again, Jim Edgden, the director of the Fairfield High School Jazz Band. 20 members strong, and they played tremendous today. You'll hear some more of them as we move along later on, but also did a tremendous job for over an hour and a half in 98 degree temperatures for those that you were there on the beautiful downtown square, a real nice old-fashioned band concert yesterday. So thank you, Jim, and to your band. <laughs> Michael Brewer, the executive director of the Fairfield Chamber of Commerce, was unable to be with us today. He's been at a meeting out of the town, but he sends his best regards to everyone. He hopes to be around tomorrow morning, bright and early. He's at 7.30, David. 7.30, we're going to join around the, the square and uh, say one last goodbye, and that will be early 7.30 to 9.30, that, thereabouts, and Mike will be there at that time. We want to thank Mike and his crew at the Fairfield Chamber of Commerce for the publications and special materials that they provided for us at this gathering. Another person we want to uh, tip our hands to and that, of course, is Janine Fulmer, who is the Director of Public Affairs at Maharishi International University. No matter what we requested or asked, she was more than willing. We needed 20 chairs. We have 20 chairs. We found out when we got here, we needed a power cord. Janine went out, got us the power cord. So there's also many, many other things that she did. And when I met her yesterday, I could see how genuinely sincere and how creative and how talented this woman was. A few moments ago, as we walked in, I had an opportunity to meet Dr. Keith Wallace. And I could see that that same kind of cooperative that came, same kind of pleasantness, is a part of him as well. Dr. Wallace is the founding president of Maharishi International University and the executive vice president. Please give a warm Parsons College welcome to Dr. Keith Wallace. It's a great joy to hear about all the exciting events that you've been holding this week. The students, faculty, and administration of Marshi International University are glad to meet with you and hear about life on campus before we came to Fairfield. The memories and events that you share give us deeper, a deeper level of understanding about this campus and its history. Parsons College was founded to uphold the highest values of academic excellence and high quality of life in Fairfield. Parsons has had a long and respected history and has made a significant contribution to the growth in so many lives as well as the lives of Fairfield itself, the life of Fairfield itself, which we all now enjoy. For 21 years, this campus has been the home of Marishi International University 
where we share in the goals envisioned by the founders of Parsons College. MIU's unique contribution in the world of education is the development of students' own consciousness through the addition of the Transcendental Meditation Program to our traditional fields of study. This program in our Golden Domes allows the students to expand their container of knowledge by strengthening the basis of inner intelligence, thus increasing the capacity for learning. MIU offers that complete knowledge to our graduates to make them the leaders in their professions competent to meet any challenge in the nation. We know that we will continue to pursue the highest goals and make Fairfield internationally renowned for its contribution to the field of education. We are all fond of the campus and cherish the lovely architecture and its historical value. We will continue to preserve and upgrade the integrity of the buildings over the years. If you have an opportunity, you may wish to visit the newly renovated Carnegie Hall, Student Union, and Pond area. I understand this may be the last planned Parsons reunion, but I want to extend to you a warm invitation and sincere wish that you return at any time to visit the campus and to share with us the pride that we feel in the improvements and growth that continue on this campus. I hope you are having a wonderful time during your reunion and wish you the very best in all your endeavors. Sincerely, Dr. Ben Morris. And I'd just like to add a few words on my behalf. I was the individual who actually came out and saw the campus when it was, had been shut down, met with the town people, and um, was involved in actually the purchase. And uh, it was quite an experience to first come upon this campus and see it at that time. There were pencils on the desks, there were papers all over. You had a feeling, it was a, quite an eerie feeling actually walking on and seeing something that had been shut down so suddenly. And then to uh, work with the town people and cleaning up the campus and see the enthusiasm that was there with somebody new occupying these buildings because they were deteriorating quite a lot. We have put probably $16 million into this campus in buildings, uh, working on renovating buildings uh, and keeping it up. And even at that, we have a hard job, as you can see here and there. So it's, uh, it's a big task, it's a big campus. We really appreciated the cooperation of the town. As Mayor Rasmussen pointed out, we have been uh, something different for everyone to experience. There has been somewhat of a survival value, and we appreciate that. We know we are completely different from Parsons College. We have a different character, we have a different intention, but we really do appreciate the history. There was some people visiting the other day and they came in the Hen Mansion and this lady had had her grandmother who had been here at Parsons College and she was very proud of it, very nostalgic about it. And she came in the Hen Mansion and I showed her around and there was a book there that had some pictures of early Parsons College and I think it meant a lot to her to be able to see that there was some continuity and there was some history. And I think it's very important in all of our lives to keep that history and that tradition and we certainly here at MIU don't want to see the tradition of Parsons lost. It's important to us that this was a very old college, that it had a tradition, that it had a certain integrity to it, which was very unique. When I was first here in 1974, I remember speaking to the governor and other people, and people were very proud of Parsons College. They saw it as a very unique experiment, something that was, had made a great headway in education. So I think I would encourage you all to keep that tradition. We certainly will do everything we can here at MIU to keep a place for your history, to encourage as many reunions as we can have, to encourage you to, in any way possible, uh, create that history and to keep it lively for your children and your grandchildren. And we really enjoy having you. We really enjoy hearing about the history of ours, and it gives us a continuity. I, as many people here in Fairfield now that are at this college move from another place. I grew up in California. So coming to Iowa was probably the last concept I had in mind in my life. But I've been here 20 years now. I have four children who have gone through our school over here, which uh, you may know about. It's won many awards. This year we won the state tennis, state golf. We won the spelling bee. We win the science fairs regularly. We win many of the history fair 
we win many things, and it's quite a, we're very proud of the school. And uh, my children went through it. They, um, one of them graduated. I have two grandchildren now. They're here visiting. Uh, I have two boys who are in graduate school, and I have my youngest daughter who is now a freshman at this college. So you think that I'm a newcomer, but 20 years is a pretty long time, and having four kids gone through it, I feel pretty much like I belong in Fairfield now. This is my home. And I think many of us feel that way. We've grown very accustomed to this environment. We really appreciate this college. We're very attached to this college. We really, really are attached to it. So I just want you to know that. We, you do have some caretakers that are here, and you have people who will, at any time, help organize a reunion, will at any time help preserve, if you want any kind of a history of Parsons here, if you want to create anything in that memory. We are very open to it. In fact, we appreciate it. And we appreciate the effort that Dave Pierce and George Jordan and all the people who were involved in putting this together, and Janine has done a wonderful job. And we'd just like to show some appreciation by giving a bouquet of flowers on behalf of MIU to Parsons College.
and most of all, I felt sorry for myself because uh, suddenly I had no valley water. I was uh, angry, and I pointed my finger at uh, Miller Roberts and numerous others. It took a while, but I came to realize that trying to decide who killed Parsons College was an exercise in futility. There was plenty of blame to go around. Down deep, I knew that uh, because of things I did and didn't do, then part of that blame falls on me. My only regret in, is the unfair image which Parsons acquired in the 60s and 70s and which persists today. It's ironic that while Parsons' educational program was among the highest in the nation, the quality of it, most people uh, knew us only as plunk out you. That injustice still needs to be corrected, and I work at it whenever I get an opportunity, and I hope you do too. Sometime after 1973, I finally got things in perspective. While it's regrettable that Parsons College is no more, we should thank God that it existed for 73 years, or 98 years, I'm sorry. Did Parsons change our lives? Of course it did. The older I get, the more I treasure my friends. Uh, just for fun, I conducted what I call a, a friendship survey. Where, where do we find our friends? Well, to start out, uh, we find them in, in public school, in college, at work, at church, in military service, in various social and civic organizations. But far and away, the largest group of friends in my life all have ties to Parsons. I'm not talking just about uh, college classmates, but people who attended Parsons years before I did, and, and those who were on campus uh, years after I graduated. I'm, al I'm also proud to say that I found my, my very best friend, my wife Joyce, at Parsons. My uh, college days began right here in this room. Uh, when I enrolled as a freshman in September of 1940, I think about my fraternity days and all the fun and, and fellowship that went with it. With sadness, I also think about a fraternity picture taken during the early days uh, of World War II. Of the 40 young men in the photo, eight were killed in action and three were prisoners of war. But sometime uh, after college, I made an interesting discovery about fraternities. In 1941, my frat was the best, and the frat on the other side of the campus was the absolute worst. <laughs> Today, I, I cherish my male Parsons friends uh, for what they are, and I'm pleased to say that I can't remember who was a Zeta and who was an AKX. <laughs> I hope so. 
Uh, I'm sure many of you attended a reunion bill as one last draw for Parsons. In case you've forgotten, that was 20 years ago. If, uh, if we can't find anything else to share about today, <coughs> I think we should celebrate the uh, Parsons spirit. I couldn't define the, the Parsons spirit, but a lot of people <coughs> that you and I know embody it. I prefer to think that it still exists, even though the college does not. Now, if you're like me, your Parsons memories include a few faculty members. I was an English major, and as such, Winifred, Winifred Watts did her best to expose me to the giants of literature. Alfred Lord Tennyson was one of those on her list, and he wrote a poem entitled In Memoriam. Somewhere in that poem is a line we've all heard, and I think Dr. Watts would be proud of me for quoting it. Uh, better than anything else, it sums up my feelings about the life and death of Parsons College. It is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Gabbard, for those wonderful, wonderful memories. And speaking of memories, I think one of the greatest things about Parsons College, and I don't know if other liberal arts schools had the same kind of cooperation and the same kind of welcomeness that we had with the business people of Fairfield Island. I don't know a Parsons College student that was not welcome downtown. I don't know a Parsons College student that in some way was helped by a business downtown. I truthfully believe that the reason that Parsons had prospered so well and lasted like it did was because of the community effort as well as the college effort. And it's really noticeable today the amount of professors and staff, and many of them on our dais today, that have made Parsons their home. Now I'd like to present one of the strongest, probably the cheerleader among all businessmen downtown, former Parsons College trustee who gave not only of his time, but of his business to make Parsons on, uh, to put Parsons on the map with all the flags, banners, you name it, Lee Gunn will have it. Also, a retired Fairfield businessman, of course, and a real strong community leader. Lee, along with Marty Pellin, were very instrumental in setting up this uh, convocation for you today. I'd like to present now and give a warm welcome to the retired businessman from downtown Fairfield in his splendid Kelly Green coat and white Parsons patch, Mr. Lee Gunn.
It could have been sold off building by building. Some church wanted this building. Somebody wanted this and that. And so we have NYU to thank that this great campus is still intact. When I matriculated here in the 30s, we had compulsory chapel here in this building five days a week. What did that mean? Well, we had religious services, musical programs, and pep assemblies. Looking back, I'm glad. It didn't hurt a bit. And we all benefited. About 1935, some rascals held a chapel strike here on the campus. And the result was we compromised and we got Fridays off. <laughs> One morning here at chapel, Professor Moorhead lit the lid on this grand piano and I'll catch up. Another time, these faculty seats up here were wired, and in the middle of a ceremony, the entire faculty rose and used. <laughs> some of those signs around town about the campus strike over about this chapel. They did find on the back of some of the cardboard something about to gobble clothing. <laughs> you may have heard that I was kicked out of Parsons after three years. That's absolutely not true. I was asked to leave. <laughs> conference, I asked Dr. Clarence, Clarence Wilson Green, the president, do you remember him in that high, stiff, rigid collar? Why, doctor, must I leave? What are the charges? Young man, it is how you are affecting the curve. I said, what curve is that? He said, the grade curve. Well, why didn't somebody tell me? I thought only co-eds had curve. <laughs> well, hold back the tears, because I did participate in a commencement ceremony here. I was asked to usher. <laughs> and should I have sued the college for discrimination for in the 1960s, a student by the name of George Jordan was allowed to attend Parsons College for 10 years. <laughs> and so George became one of those career students that you hear parents talk about. So when George could no longer, there was no longer a Parsons College for George to go to, what did he do? He decided to have us have continuous reunions here in the <laughs> So I want to thank George for getting us together here this weekend. And if you know George like I know George, this is not the final flame. And George, count on us showing up if your inflation fees don't rise too fast. I want to also welcome you to Fairfield's new diet, veggies and sprouts. And when you've had your fill of tofu, I, this afternoon you can head for George Jordan's crazy hog picnic. <laughs> Final in closing, uh, just how good and indelible are our memories of Parsons College and this campus. I'm sure that all of you, like me, never a day or a week goes by when you don't have the warmest and fondest of recollections. I want to thank uh, Dr. Wallace and NYU for their hospitality. It was good seeing all of you, and be of good cheer. Thank you very much, Lee. We're wrapping things up now. We're getting close to that 60-minute time limit that we set for our program today. We thought it'd be fitting now to have John Braywood to come up once again to give and uh, recite 
for us the communication from Dr. Louise Roberts to wrap up today's presentation. John? When I called Louise Roberts and asked her if she would be willing to participate, she said, my God, I'm almost 80 years old. I don't travel very well. I said, well, likely because you still write very well. She said, yes, but I'm all wrapped up in uh, gray, small grades. She teaches at uh, Oneonta State University. And she said that she had uh, just a number of responsibilities and she was leaving to go out of the country. Okay. Well, I said to her in response, look, Mrs. Roberts, for two years I took the United States 150, 250, 350, 450. I never gave you one bit of slack about what or not I was going to do an assignment. Now, this is your assignment, and I would like you to respond. She said, well, now that you put it in those terms, she said, I can do it. <laughs> I'd like to read this to you. I think it shows, uh, at least it did for me, uh, what continues to be a great deal of love for this institution and for the years that uh, she had, she was involved with Parsons College. Dear friends, you're loyalty to Parsons College, as it is expressed in your gathering this weekend, would have given Dr. Roberts much pleasure were he alive today. I must feel that pleasure for him. And so, let me send greetings to all of you who have come to renew friendship and to recall your college years. Let me send greetings to you, to all the Parsons College students throughout the land. Of all my years, of all my college teaching, and they will remember 60 years very soon. The time that Dr. Roberts and I spent at Parsons will remain the most challenging and the most memorable. But then there comes a time when we must step aside, like old King Lear. Be content to ponder the mystery of things. My time has come, but your time lies in the future. May the future be long and rewarding. Good luck, best switches. Louise A. Roberts. What we want to do now, I'm glad Dr. Herb, I should say Mayor Rasmussen, reminded me of this. George Jordan III, would you please come to the front? We want you to join and help lead us in the singing of the Parsons Alma Mater. What we're going to do, folks, just so you know this, when we finish the singing of the Alma Mater together, we will have a procession out for all of our speakers to go to the tree outside, the tree planting ceremony around the flagpole, which is just located outside of the Fairfield Hall, of course. And we will gather around that area, and then you can move out after, after we move out, of course, in order. George? Here's the guy that did it all.